Happy Saturday, everybody, and you're welcome to the Today's Woman Show. My name is Renee Q. Boating, and we're here at the Melvin Pick Ambassador Hotel in the heart of Accra. As usual, this is my plush presidential suite. We'll be right back. It's time for the monologue. This is when we go out there. There's so many different topics, so many women out there, different views. Let's hear what they have to say. My level up. My level up. My level of education will... Um, will help me determine the husband I want because um, I know my visions, I know what I want and then if I'm able to get a man who is up to my standard or above my standard, I think it is going to help my family and then my children as well. So I would consider that. I would say yes, the level of education will determine the husband I choose because if I'm a degree holder, I would like someone who has upgraded above me so that he can motivate me or help me go up. But if I take somebody who is like lower than mine, he will then sometimes, your visions and aims will be limited, yes. Sometimes some people find themselves in marriages with husbands whom they've not been into a higher level. But you see, um, you see, I believe that we all have our purposes. Maybe somebody's purpose is not to reach that level, but the person will be able to do something better that will make the person survive. So it is not a matter of being higher. So I think my level of education will really determine the man I'll marry because probably maybe when we are taking a decision, he might not understand me because of my level of education. So. In case he's even an SHS leaver, I'll try to pull him along by advising him to go the next step so that we all be at par. So that in case we are discussing something, we'll be able to talk academically, like we'll have that thing, yeah. Except that because in this level or in this modern Ghana, we move with class. So with my class, I think I'll take someone with the same level. So at least it wouldn't be like me infringing because when I'm more educated than him, I think I would use my education level to be as a blockade to our marriage. So I think I'll marry someone with the same level. I don't think my education will help me choose that person. And because like I love the person, no matter who the person is, and I don't care about my education background whether I'm in a higher position or lower position, love is love. Even if my husband is lower than me, I still love him, so I'll still marry him. It doesn't matter about my education background. The woman on the move is a female entrepreneur. She's extremely hardworking, she is focused, and she's heading towards her goal. Let's see who she is today. Decades ago, wearing bees for a female child at birth portrayed a well-rounded shape for her waist. It also projected her to be more attractive and good-looking at the adolescent stage. Bees have played a enormous role in the culture, fashion, economy and also in the artistic expression of the African people. Bees continue to play a role in many traditional rites and ceremonies such as coming of age, circumcision, marriage, burial and local festivals. But for some time now, the wearing of bees seem to have declined due to modernity, not until recently when it has again become the toast of Ghanaians. Using bees as a jewelry and its accessories have become a way of life for most Ghanaians. The uniqueness bees possess in adding meaning to modern fashion has helped a great deal to ensuring that bead making has now found its rightful place in the creative industry, 
with many businesses springing up in many parts of the country. Some wear it around their necks and other parts of their body. Bead wearing also becoming a form of clothing and used in making handbags. It is often said that wearing of bees make women more attractive and appealing to the opposite sex. Bees are mostly produced from recycled materials such as broken glass bottles, stones, oyster shells and plastics. At a local market in the central business district of Accra, people from all walks of life visit the market to buy bees for one reason or the other. Sandra Pong, who has been trading in bees for the past five years, sells raw materials for those making the bees to purchase. She was disturbed business has not been lucrative. Business was, it was booming, it was really good, but now, as you can see, there's no one here. It used to be good before now. Bees have over the years morphed to become a luxury brand for export. For over five years now, the Dubia Jensen has been transforming ordinary bees into luxury bags for exports. From a very tender age, I've loved to design and just create fashion accessories and clothing. Um, but moving forward uh, many years, I just decided that when I return to Ghana, I'd like to create a brand or to create a, start a company um, focusing mainly on um, design designing fashion accessories and clothing line. Um, so with Edubia Jensen, I actually got the um, idea of designing handbags made out of beads um, a few years ago. According to her, to transform bees into a luxurious product, one needs to be detailed, oriented and rely on a skilled labor force. As with any startup, Edubia Jensen's designs have faced several challenges with access to financial support being the most difficult hurdle. One of the challenges you find because you want to grow quickly is um, sometimes lack of funding. Lack of funding has actually held me back from being bigger than what we are today. However, I sincerely believe this is also one of the kind of, um, can I say, as you heard me say, described earlier, to be a, a very good bead weaver takes a very long time. So yes, we could speed up the, the process of becoming an expert bead weaver. If we had the financial backing, it would, it would help because we'd be able to have a big workshop and all those things, which we are still managing you know, on a smaller scale at the moment. So we are growing organically. So funding, uh, I've done, used all my own resources to grow the brand um, and I think the funding would have helped because we would have been able to uh, employ more staff much quicker, be able to um, have more shops much quicker. But I believe we are on the precipice of, you know, really expanding. Bags made from bees are not only the toast of Ghanaians, but foreign nationals have come to see them as a must-have. During the visit to the Prince of Wales and the wife of the Chiefs of Cambridge, the Asante Hini Otunfo Seitu gave us a gift, a beaded bag from the Dubia Jensen's brand. Traders and makers of bees have expressed concern that just as most sectors in Ghana have been affected by cheap and low quality imports from countries such as China, which have flooded the markets, the bead industry is no exception. Cheap and low quality imports from Asian countries, traders complain, is seriously hurting the local bead business. So our winning woman for today is Mrs. Tamara Jonah Goka. She's the CEO of Lionheart Events. And I've been trying to get her for I don't know how long. <laughs> She's finally here. You're very, very welcome. Thank you. Finally. Finally. I know how busy you are. And this is what we're going to talk about uh, yeah. really today. I mean, how you're running. Congratulations. It's been 10 years yeah, now. I know. I, know, I think I, know, I, I, know. I have to I know. give you a toast <laughs> to that one. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Ten years in business. Thank you. Mm, it's really, it's nice. really good. Yeah. Well done. Congratulations. So I'm just wondering, did you grow up knowing that this is what you wanted to do? I don't think so. Um, 
I've always been one of those people that believed in, um, and I think after school, trying to, I think, I don't, I don't think anybody, very few of us finish school knowing exactly, knowing exactly what, what you want to do. do. Um, so I think when I was done with school, it was really trying to find myself, and w within that time frame, it was more, okay, what, what am I good at, and what makes sense? Um, I don't think I ever thought about events as a career. Um, really? No. So let's go back to school. What did you do, <coughs> and what were your plans? Okay, so my undergraduate, um, I did sociology and media studies, <laughs> nothing to do with events. Um, and then for my master's, I did the business management um, with special focus on tourism, hospitality, okay. but then did courses in events. Okay. Yeah, okay. event management. Okay, so you finished your master's even at that point, you felt like you didn't know yourself? No. So. After undergraduate, before I did my master's, okay. I knew I kind of wanted to do events, but I still right. didn't know to what degree. Okay, but at the time you were not in Ghana? No. Okay, no. so did no, you no, start no. your business out, out of Ghana? Before I did. Um, so after I did my master's, I actually started um, work in South Africa, but it was very um, wedding, a wedding planning company. Okay. Um, and I did that for about two years um, before moving home. Okay. So did you come with, a, with the intention of setting up one here? Yeah. And at the time, did you think we needed it? So well, what was the difference that you were bringing? I think um, for me, it was um, when I decided I was going to move to Ghana, I mean, home is home. So, you know, over the years, every time I would come home for holidays and stuff and, you know, Christmas time, there were so many weddings. I know, Christmas would, is the yeah, season. Uh, season for <laughs> events. Um, and every time I would go to a lot of these events, I literally felt like it was the same thing over and over again mm. in just different colors. Right. You know, okay. um, and for me, I just felt just to bring in something different. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how it started. And what's the difference? What would you say the difference is? I think our main focus is on the design. I think um, for me is not so much, the management of the event is obviously one aspect of it, but I think for me, um, it was important that, for me personally, that all our events were completely signatory to our clients. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and I take a lot of time and you know <laughs> yeah so how long and i mean like i have so many questions to ask you but what i'm wondering is tell us a bit about lionheart event so what exactly do you do because now there are event companies that just manage the event mm -hmm. or they do the decor mm -hmm. or they do this or they do that so what do you do so we're a full house um event design and management company okay um what that means is we we offer a, a bespoke service um to our clients um from start to finish mm -hmm. um, and it's managing it's managing them really is managing mm. their lives and you know um, their special moments they, yeah for that, okay uh, and it's it's both um, corporate as well as social events okay. and, and weddings um, okay. as well but you have grounds as well that you rent you have a, a, a yeah so that's new um, that's um, started just about 18 months ago okay um, so that that that's something that over time we realized that the there was a need and our mm -hmm. clients were asking yeah so what um, do you offer that. It's a um, it's a private space, um, capacity of about two hundred and fifty, so it's it's quite small. Okay. Um, it can, you know, it, it it lends itself for diversity and um, yeah, it's, it's a garden. Okay, that's beautiful. So that that's where you have your high teas, right? Yes. You tell us a bit about that a, a bit later. <laughs> um, so when when you say bespoke service, when somebody comes to you with an event, is the first thing what the budget is or what they want? How 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 do you work it out? I think it goes hand in hand. Um, I, I think it's very easy, especially in this day of social media and you know Pinterest and everything. It's so easy to just have images and click, 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 and I want, I want, I want. And um, I think a lot of times that's what we find. People come in and it's like you're showing an image, but in fact, when we have to cost it, mm. you know, that's where the difficulty mm. kind of comes in. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So then, what? So so what I'm what I'm asking is, um, so does somebody come to you with what the event is, and then you create, you know, what it should look like, or they come and tell you what they, what colors they like, what sort of ambience they it's, want. They start with the foundation. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's important for it has to be their foundation. The building blocks is really us, I guess. Um, but once I get the sense of what their concept is and what their vision is, then we, we start from there. Okay. Okay, well, congratulations to you again for being like a female entrepreneur. We are celebrating all like female entrepreneurs out there. And I'm saying this because, um, you know, it, it, and you're, you're young. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not telling them your age, no. don't worry. You know, you know but, but you're young. And growing up, mm -hmm. we were in school together. We were. But I'm older than you. 
but <laughs> <go> okay <laughs> You know, but growing up, mm -hmm. but growing up, you know, all, our parents wanted us to, you know, have our corporate jobs mm -hmm. and you know, work in the bank, be a lawyer, you know, this and that. So, what was your 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 parents' reaction when you said, "I want to start my own business"? Did you have the support? To be honest, I didn't go through that with my parents. I, um, oh, you didn't? No. <laughs> okay. So, what um, kind of family? You know, what is it like? I've always had a very supportive family. Okay. Um, both my parents were entrepreneurs, um, and both in my dad more in corporate um but i guess my mom to some degree also managed quite a bit mm. <laughs> um so with with that i think when i did say it was events um i think kind of just made sense because i think my personality also went with it mm. so they were very supportive it wasn't a situation of you know you have to be a doctor do or a lawyer or do that. no i yeah. never i never yeah. had that and 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 at home growing up did you like organize events at home my well i guess um because of my father and his job, we always had to entertain. So my mom mm. was always entertaining. And, and when I say entertaining, it could be four people, it could be 300 people, it could be 1,000 oh, people. Wow. Um, so I think growing up, just witnessing that, I'm, I'm sure it kind of sparked something right. in me without even right. realizing that it did. Um, so I would say that's probably where it started more than right, anything. Right. And is there anybody in, in your industry that you actually look up to that has probably guided you? They may or may not know, but is there a role model somewhere, you know, that you sort of aspire to become or even be better than? Um, there are a lot of them. I, I get inspiration from so many people, men, mm. women, um, so many industries. Um, there isn't a specific person per se. Um, but yeah, I think every day I, I see somebody else that I, <laughs> I like feel you like can pick I have something to from, you pick connect. Yeah. yeah, every day. Okay. So what is it like running a business? Um, here in Ghana. It's not easy. It's not easy. At all. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about it. It can be exhausting. Um, I think you have to, number one, love what you do. I don't, I don't look at it like a job. Mm. Um, there isn't a day that I walk into my office and I'm upset. I'm, you know, I'm you happy. Love what I love you I do. wake up in the morning. I'm eager to get <laughs> into the office to do what I have to do. Um, I think it becomes a problem when you look at it as a job. Then mm. it takes away the joy of what you're doing. So you're passionate about what you're doing. Extremely. Yeah. Extremely. But would, would, you know, the, the, I was having a conversation recently um, with the lady and we're saying how sometimes your, your passion can actually lead you to almost poverty. Because <laughs> you can love what you do so much so yeah. that even when it's not making money, that you know, you love true. it. That's so then you're true. still doing it. Are you able to balance? And I'm asking you this because, you know, when it comes to Lionheart events, people actually have the notion that it's an expensive mm -hmm. company. Like, as soon as you say, like, oh my goodness, can you even afford it? You know, so how are you able to balance that? That's a difficult one. I would say my brother always used to say, um, always think of the business, you know? Mm. So I think the easiest thing is, is to just, especially with design or decor, um, I mean, there's so many beautiful things out there, you know, and you're always having to like <laughs> pull yourself back. And, um, and in creativity, there's no, there's no limit. There's no limit. You know, so you can imagine the world and, and just keep on adding, adding, adding. Um, but I think it's one of those things that you have to, I mean, I have people depending on me, so it's not about me mm. anymore. So I think a lot of times that's... Yeah, how many employees do you have? <laughs> We're 15 at the moment. Wow, wow. 15. And do they all get your vision? They do now. Mm. Maybe not what, when what, how, well, how has it been... When I ask about, you know, running a business in Ghana, sometimes some people say that the difficulty, it can, be, it can come from different areas. Mm -hmm. But lots of the time, sometimes it's to do with employees. You know, understanding your brand, yeah. understanding your vision, and all. so have you trained them? And you know, um, what have you done? I have a, I have an amazing team, and I think you know, number one, I I, it's a good feeling when you see your staff posting your own picture on their Instagram page or on their yeah. DP. You know, um, I, then I know they they're loving what they do. I don't think anybody ever walked into my office and said, oh, okay, fine, you know what, I want to, you know, if somebody came in and said I wanted to be an office manager, for, for example, there's no resume that would have mm. given me, like, experience to say, oh, yeah. okay, fine, you you're can do it. Exactly. So, I mean, I think, again, going back to the foundation, if, if I, I tap into what, what they're good at um, and, and mm. try and bring that up and what they're not good at, again, I mean, I'm not going to... So you do a lot of SWOT analysis? A lot. Then. Okay. 
Okay. A lot. Because you can't because find anybody no, perfect to anything. No, that you can But it's training them to. Yes, and it's very important. Mm. And it's every day. And I, I, it's even training myself every day, yeah. you know. So I, I say that to them. And I'm investing myself on a daily basis and I expect them to do the same. Yeah. So, so one thing that I've noticed is really stifling the growth or even the beginning mm -hmm. of something that a woman can do is fear. Mm -hmm. You know, so has that, ha, have you ever been faced by fear um, in, in some situation? Have you overcome it? Um, I, I can't, off the top of my head, I can't think of any situation whereby I've, you know, kind of had that and that has kind of stopped me from doing what I was going to do. Um, I am very focused. I'm one of those people, if I, if I make my mind up on doing something, I definitely... Like determination. Yeah, I make sure I get right. it done. So then you sound like a risk taker. Because I think, you know, risk takers I, but are I think not it's events. You have, you have to... It has to be. Do you have panic? Risk. But do you have a panic? Um, I'm sure there's panic somewhere, you know, but it doesn't stop me from doing what I have to do. Okay, look, if I you, have, then you, I you have the high tea event, okay? <laughs> yes, we do. That you do quite, mm -hmm. I think the next one is Mother's, Mother's Day, Day or something, yeah. okay? So say if you plan for 200 people, mm -hmm. do you ever panic? I mean, please, let's be real. Mm -hmm. Do you ever say to yourself, what if nobody comes? I'll give you an example. So we literally, our first high tea, um, which was in, so that would have been December 2017, and we'd finished setting up the guests were there, um, and it just started raining. Like, we literally <sighs> <laughs> everything <laughs> and it just started pouring um i mean it was probably about 15 minutes so what away. did you do we had to reset up we had to set up all over again no so what did the guys do they run they, away so <laughs> luckily luckily we had a marquee there so they all went and we all stood there i mean it, it was the vibe as well it kind of went <laughs> almost felt like it was planned um you know so they had their cocktails and then when the rain stopped we set up all the I'm tables i'm asking this because you know when you're the event planner okay it's like the person's moment. Mm -hmm. I like what you said, moment. The moment is it's it's once. once. Yes. You know, your wedding is yeah. once. Mm -hmm. So like if I've come and given my wedding to you, yep. okay, mm -hmm. Tamara, I ought to have the most beautiful wedding, glorious yep. wedding, yep. blah, blah, blah. Yep. And on that day, mm -hmm. anything happens, it's on you. I guess. <laughs> Except acts of God. <laughs> so yes. Technically, for what we can control, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then, have you had any disasters? Let me ask you. No. You, uh, th thank God, we no haven't. No cake falling? No. Thank God. No. Okay. No. <laughs> oh, not <laughs> on that. you do. <laughs> no. No. It's, it's been... We've but been comparing blessed. South Africa to Ghana, because you, you've done a couple of weddings yeah, we there and do. here. You still do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's the difference? And what do you think, you know, when, it, when in terms of growth, have mm -hmm. you seen any growth in the 10 years? In Ghana? Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. And then comparing the two? Um, I mean, ten, events 10 years ago, you know, there were very few people in the market um, even trying to, like, explain to people what my concept was or how my business module was. It, it, it was hard. Difficult, it was difficult, yeah. it, you know. Um, but I think people get it now um, and, and they appreciate it that much more. People understand that, hey, you know what, you need a professional to come in mm. and help you and assist because it is a stressful time. It, even if it, it's stressful regardless, you know, mm. I mean, you're, it's not just about the bride. It's not just about the groom. You have family members that you also have to try and please in the, mm, in the yeah. middle of everything yeah. else. So it's not an easy... Everybody's talking to you at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> it's not an easy... Um, task to, to take mm. on. And one thing, I spoke to another event planner a, a while ago, and one thing she said made the, the business expensive mm -hmm. was the fact that you always have to almost, you know, have new, new things. Yes. And so do you, do you have, I don't know if you have your chairs, your we this, do. your that. We do. You know, that then is, what do you do? Um, so when you ask me the difference between Ghana and um, South Africa, in mm -hmm. South Africa, there are so many different rental companies that you don't, um, you don't have to invest so much in your inventory. Um, so the business we do in South Africa, it's just a lot of outsourcing. We put the design together and we literally go around finding suppliers who can pull everything um, or supply everything that we need. In Ghana, it doesn't work that way. You're very limited to what you can get. Um, and if you want something that is so, you know, Unique. you have to invest in it. And, and investing so in this is not... what do you do after it goes out of season, for example? Good question. <laughs> you just keep on buying. No, but you probably start sales then. And we have. We have done that in the you past. Okay. Yeah, we have okay. done that in the past. Um, but I find that it, it's weird. I mean, designing an event is almost like fashion. You know, you almost think it's that like it's not going to come and then, it and then it'll come back. Mm -hmm. You know, even with chairs, I mean, the same chairs that have been around for over 20 years. You can't say I've invested, I'm going to 
chuck it out, mm -hmm. you know, because the one bride will come and say they That's want it, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, so it, it, you get rid of the things that you know are definitely not going to happen again. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other things you try and keep so and work with So what gets you it. out of bed every morning? When you wake up, what is that? What pushes you? If it's a secret, share with me. I won't tell you. <laughs> Don't worry, don't worry, I'll tell anybody. I would say, gosh, a lot of times with my clients, you know, I, I wake up to WhatsApp messages, <laughs> which I love anyway, but it's always, this person needs me, I, I need to Renee, go and get it done. Renee, you coming on the Today's yes. Show? And that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so that's what gets me up, because I, I know I have mm -hmm. to, and the I other think, people relying I think, on me. I mean, when I, I, was, I, I, I was in designing and all that, and it's, which is all the same. part of like, mm -hmm. you know, the creative mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. I think what I love about it is every day is not the same. At all. You know? At all. No so, client yeah, is ever exactly. the same. Exactly. So it yeah. makes it exciting. It does. It's not boring. Yes. Because you, you, you never know who you may meet True. and all that, which is exciting. I mean, I love True. that. True. True. And so it's a lot, even with, with us, um, especially when you have clients that are a lot of repeat clients, you have to impress them every single time. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing 10 events for them, it's like, okay, the 11th one. I know there's so many people out there who you know really admire what you're doing you, you your your events are beautiful thank you. I, I do thank have you. to say thank you. you know so you have a lot of followers who are probably following you mm -hmm. not as clients but as an inspiration so i'd like you to give a word out there to maybe a female entrepreneur out there wanted to start something not necessarily in your industry but generally starting um, I would say don't let fear cripple you. That's mm. number one. Um, I think it's important to know who you are and know what your vision is. And I mean, not to sound cliche, but know what God has actually brought you in this world to do and stay focused and true to that and, and, and focus and get to, yeah. I yeah, don't know, I just messed the last time. That's really, <laughs> you heard it out there. You know, fear is the one thing that really, really sometimes is a huge stumbling block. You can do it. Just, just try. Just, just start. Just start. I say, just start as little as you can. Just start. I have a surprise for you. You're mm. actually the first guest okay. that I'm doing this with. So this is a little tiny gift from me to you. Okay, this is the Renee Q Love Pillow, and you know, every time you see this, I really want you to always remind yourself of how special you are, <laughs> and I want you to share with all of us one thing you love about yourself and why. Okay, so this Thank is yours. You so really cute love it what i love about myself i would say i love my drive um why because it keeps me focused and it keeps me grounded yeah we're celebrating you today you're doing thank a you great so job much. all thank the very you, best keep so going much. keep thank going because you. you're inspiring whether you know it or not you're inspiring many women out there thank you. so keep going congratulations we'll be right back It's been an amazing show today. Thank you so much for joining me. We'll be back next week, Saturday at 11 a.m. on TV3 and on DSTV 279. You really cannot miss it. And ladies, like I said earlier on, we really need to start celebrating ourselves. So every time you look in the mirror, always tell yourself one thing you love about you because you are today's woman. Have a lovely weekend, everybody, and stay blessed.